When you hear about retirement planning, some pretty big numbers get thrown around, but the reality is that most people don't have one or two million dollars set aside. So let's look at what it's like to retire with 500,000. And what we'll do is start with some calculations and give you tips on how you can run these numbers for yourself with your own details. Then we'll go through some strategies that can help you make that money last. $500,000 is sufficient to retire on for a lot of people, and a lot of people do it with less. Now more is certainly better, but it ultimately comes down to your individual circumstances. For example, the amount you spend is a big factor, and that's gonna depend on a couple of different things. It might just be your lifestyle, but where you live also has an impact on your expenses. Any income sources that come into your household are also important. So if you have a pension plus social security, full social security benefits, then that's certainly helpful. If you have multiple sources of income, coming into the household, that doesn't hurt. And luck also plays a role in all of this. So it might have to do with what do the markets do right after you retire? Are they strong or do they crash? Or what type of health care events come up? What conditions do you have now? And what might arise during retirement? All of these things together are going to affect what your spending looks like. To keep things simple, we're going to use some averages from the BLS. The latest data available is roughly $48,000 per year that a household over age 65 spends. But ultimately, this needs to be useful for you. So you can take the concepts that we talk about in this video and then overlay your own numbers into the calculators that you're gonna have access to. And that way, you can get a decent idea of what your retirement might look like. It's also helpful to know that your spending can change over time during retirement. For example, some people talk about the go-go, the slow-go, and the no-go years. So your go-go years are right after you stop working, you're young and healthy, and you're eager to go out and do all of those things you've dreamed about doing. But you might start slowing down some, and eventually you get to a point where you don't wanna sit on an airplane for eight hours and your healthcare costs start to rise as you spend less on leisure and entertainment. Another big piece of all of this is any retirement income that you get. So that's social security or pensions. And social security is a big piece of retirement income for a lot of people in the US. So we're gonna lean on that as we go through this. If you have roughly $500,000 saved for retirement, then we're gonna assume that you get a bit more than the average here because you've had the earnings and the work history to help you save some money. Your age also affects how much you get from Social Security, so that can impact your plan. You really want to do some analysis and make some decisions, keeping in mind that you may have beneficiaries who might take over your Social Security benefit. By the way, I'm Justin Pritchard. I help people plan for retirement and invest for the future. So in the description below, you're going to find some resources on this topic, and I'll include some links to calculators that you can use to run your own numbers. So I'll start with a single person example and then get into a couple, and these are oversimplified examples, but the important thing is to paint the picture of how things might unfold and show you how you can run some of these numbers yourself. We looked at some of those statistics on spending, and if you're going to retire with 500,000 in assets, unless you have some really great retirement income, you're probably not going to be on the high end of those statistics. So we'll assume somebody here spending about $45,000 per year, going to get 2,000 a month of social security income. So we'll put those numbers into our handy calculator here, $45,000 of spending or income. We're going to ignore taxes for right now, but we'll get to that later. And she gets $2,000 a month in Social Security. That leaves $21,000 that she's going to need to withdraw from savings each year. Now you can play with an inflation rate, and of course inflation is higher right now. The question is, will it remain high for the rest of your life for the next 30 years or something? That would be interesting if it did. So I'm just gonna go with this for right now. And one year away from retirement, let's say five and a half percent returns, both before and during retirement and 25 years of life, maybe 30 years of life. If we look at the calculations there, this person needs about 457,000. So depending on how much she has, if you already had 500,000, you might be all set. However, again, this is an oversimplification. So we have ignored taxes. Let's assume that all of that money is in a pre-tax retirement account. 
you're going to have to pay some income taxes when you take withdrawals. So one way to look at that is just to increase, again, this is an oversimplification, but you might say, let's call it 50,000 and assume roughly 5,000 in taxes each year. And what might that mean? Well, that might mean you need an extra $65,000 above the 500,000 you're thinking of. Another issue is that this assumes flat returns each year. And the fact is that you're never going to get exactly five and a half percent. Some years you'll get five, some years you'll get six, some years you'll lose money, some years you'll earn more, but they typically don't go in a straight line. So we have to wonder what would happen if you have bad timing, for example, if there's a big market crash right at the beginning of your retirement. To help paint a richer picture of that, let's look at a financial planning program that's a little bit more robust. So this is saying that she might have roughly a 50-50 chance of success and got some tricks to improve that. But just for starters, that's more or less a coin toss. So what does that mean if there's a 50% chance of success? This is a Monte Carlo analysis. And so what happens is we might say that you get a thousand different hands of cards. Some of those are really good. Those might be the ones up here that leave you with a lot of money at the end of your retirement or the end of your life. Some of them are really bad and you would run out of money early. And in roughly 50% of these cases, you end up just making it. You're probably not going to get the best luck as you go into retirement and hopefully you don't get the worst luck, but we want to be able to account or a number of different ranges here so that if things are kind of bad or pretty bad, that you have a decent chance of making it. So what can we do to improve those chances of success? One way is to adjust spending. So if you're flexible, then you can reduce what you spend in years when things are really bad, or you might even look at something like the retirement spending smile, which is based on some research from David Blanchett, which says that retirees might spend at roughly inflation minus 1%. Now this has her with a 100% chance of success, which I don't like. Nothing is 100% certain. I wish it would stop at 99%, but just by making that little adjustment, this has dramatically improved the chances, but it's not something you can do on one of those basic online calculators. Just to look at a little bit more detail on how this might unfold, by the way, this doesn't perfectly match what we looked at in the basic online calculator, but it's close enough for our purposes. So they have about $500,000 here. She's gonna work for one more year, then that income stops. She's gonna wait until age 70 to take social security. So there are a couple years there with zero income, and then a partial year, then that full social security benefit kicks in. Of course, it's inflation adjusted, so it's actually higher out in the year 2029. Those expenses are right around 45,000 when she stops working and there's that $5,000 of taxes due. So in these first couple of years when she has no income, she's going to be taking pretty big withdrawals to support her spending. But once that social security income kicks in, then she can take much smaller distributions and that tax bill is going to come down. And we can take a look at that if we look at what her tax rate might be. This is an effective tax rate, so this takes into account any deduction that you've taken. Uh, typically, people pay surprisingly low taxes, especially if you're at this asset level in retirement, roughly 500,000 in savings. If you have a couple of million, you're going to be in higher tax brackets, especially later in life once you start taking those required minimum distributions. But at this stage and with this asset level, the tax rates can be surprisingly low for some people. So that was our single example. And now we can look at a couple, but I'm not gonna go through all of those steps again. They've got two sources of income coming in. So that makes it a lot easier to support higher spending levels. So let's jump over to the quick calculator just to see how that looks. So they wanted 50,000 of income or spending They've got 35,000 of social security coming into the household. So that's only 15,000 they need to generate out of their assets. Let's throw on a little bit extra just for some taxes and other things. So we'll keep all of the other assumptions the same and it's a 30 year retirement here. They can also make do with less than 500,000. Again, 
ignoring some taxes and bad timing and other things that might pop up as surprises, but with a really simplified calculation, they're at least kind of in the ballpark with about 500,000 in assets. Of course, it's important to plan for one person's death and that might happen sooner or later, so you want to look at how that might affect the household. As you're doing these ballpark calculations, another thing you can do is look at a withdrawal rate. Again, it's an oversimplification, but it's a way to kind of take your temperature and just see if things look way out of whack or if they look more or less okay. So in this case, we've got them pulling 20,700 out of their assets, and that's based on, let's call it 500,000 of assets. So if we divide that, we get 4.14% is the withdrawal rate that these people are taking. The great debate is always going to be what is the right withdrawal rate. So the anchor point for a lot of people has been a 4% withdrawal rate, otherwise known as the 4% rule, which is a bad name for it. It's really more of a 4% research finding. And that's based on some research done long ago to try and figure out what is the maximum amount that people could withdraw in really bad situations. With historical data and pretty simplified portfolios, that happened to be 4%. Now, if you look at that and you use a more diverse portfolio, it could potentially be higher. However, a lot of people will say that given today's environment with low interest rates and wherever the market is, a lot of people think that 4% is too high. This is something that people can quibble about for hours on end, so I'm not going to try and tell you what is is your correct withdrawal rate. I actually prefer to do more detailed calculations like with the financial planning program. I tend to find that that's more helpful, but it is often useful to figure out if you're looking at a 6% withdrawal rate, you might want to make sure that you have a backup in place or you have a good reason for withdrawing a lot versus a 1% or 2% withdrawal rate, you have to wonder if you are selling yourself short. Once again, any flexibility you have in retirement is extremely valuable. So if you're able to change your spending in response to how the markets do, if you are running out of money more quickly than anticipated, then that is super helpful and maybe you can retire sooner or maybe you can start with a higher withdrawal rate versus if everything is rigid and you're running pretty thin, then you wanna go with a lower withdrawal rate because you don't have a lot of cushion to adjust to life surprises. So just for reference here, we're looking at some data from JP Morgan, their research on withdrawal rates and different portfolios and when might you have a relatively high level of confidence? When should you be more concerned? And they give you a rough idea. What I like about this is it doesn't just point at one number, it gives you some ranges and you can say, well, I'm comfortable with certain ranges. Uh, I'm good with green. I don't like anything less than dark green. Or you can say I'm willing to dip into some yellow because I want to retire sooner and I'm willing to take chances and especially maybe I can make adjustments if things aren't going well. So what about taxes? We said we talked more about that and taxes are important. This is going to reduce the amount of money you have for spending. You need to budget if you're gonna be taking withdrawals from pre-tax retirement accounts because some of that money needs to go to the IRS. The amount you actually pay is going to depend on a number of different things. And again, if it's all in pre-tax accounts, you're going to have a relatively higher tax burden versus if that money is in Roth IRAs and you satisfy all the requirements to get tax-free income. So there could even be some opportunities to do planning before you retire or before you start taking Social Security benefits, and there might be ways to reduce the amount you pay in taxes. Roth conversions are an obvious example of that. Now, since we're talking about taxes, it's time for a friendly reminder that this is just a short video. It's not individualized advice. It's not enough for you to make some really big detailed decisions on the rest of your life. So please check with some experts, work with a tax advisor, financial planner, and triple check those calculations if you're doing all of this yourself because we don't want you to run out of money early. Now, this is just an oversimplified example of what things might look like to help you visualize what the tax impact is. So at this point, the person is taking Social Security. We've got that single person example again. She gets 24000 a year in Social Security. 
So that means she only needs to pull out 21,000 from those pre-tax retirement accounts for ignoring state income tax and other factors. Her tax burden is relatively small. However, it still takes a bite out of things. And so if she was thinking she has 45,000 of income, that social security plus the withdrawals, what ends up happening is she has slightly less, so she needs to either make up the difference or pull out additional funds. A lot of people ask about living off the interest or just not dipping into their savings, but spending the earnings and the dividends that come off of their investments. I get where that comes from. Perhaps you want to keep some money around for a healthcare event, or maybe you want to give assets to the next generation or to your favorite charity. Certainly makes sense. The reality, unfortunately, is that for people who have about 500000 saved for retirement is that those people are typically going to have to spend from their assets. So what's important is that you make sure you don't run out of money before you run out of life. That goes back to some of those planning questions and looking at a withdrawal rate that is going to make it likely, at least, that you don't run out of money. And remember that if you do run out of money, you might still have some social security income and other resources available, but we really want you to be comfortable and have assets to draw on for the rest of your life. A couple of ways you can improve your chances are you can explore different products. I don't sell annuities and they can certainly be misused, but an immediate annuity, for example, can pay you income for the rest of your life and it's pretty simple and inexpensive. You certainly don't want to put all of your money into something like that, but it could help if you are driven by a need for security. Other techniques like buckets or time segmentation could also help you improve your chances. There are a lot of different ways to go about this. It just depends what feels right for you. And if you're fortunate enough to own a home and have some equity in it, then that may be available for you down the road to help cover some needs if some surprises come up. So as you're figuring all of this out, what can you do to improve your chances of success? There are a lot of moving parts, but that means there are a lot of opportunities to make little adjustments that can improve your chances. Remember those retirement spending strategies. So that's the go-go, slow-go, and no-go years where you might reduce your spending by a certain amount as you go through each phase or that retirement spending smile, which goes slightly slower than inflation, but you might want to have certain categories of spending that go faster than general inflation, like healthcare expenses. And in the category of least popular solutions, there is working longer. Now, this could be something that helps you continue to save money, and if you're able to maybe spend more on the things you love, then maybe you can keep working. Uh, not a lot of people want to do this, but it is really powerful. That's because it shortens the number of years that you take withdrawals. Plus, it can help your Social Security or your pension benefit, or both, because you've got more years of earning, possibly higher earnings, and you tend to claim at a later age, which typically helps your benefit. The drawback of that one, I don't need to tell you, is that you have to keep working longer, but even one year or a partial year can make a big difference. And take your time as you evaluate social security and other decisions like that, because when you claim can have a big impact on what your income looks like, and it can also open up opportunities like leaving some of those lower income years to make Roth conversions. And you certainly want to remember inflation and healthcare surprises as you go through all of this, because those can have surprising impact on things. And healthcare is something that it's kind of crazy. We go into retirement. We don't know how long it'll last. We don't know what healthcare issues will come up. So it's really difficult to predict, but those costs can really add up if you get into, let's say, an Alzheimer's and memory care type situation. So just think about those things, even though it's not fun, think about what might happen if those situations were to arise. So I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please leave a quick thumbs up. Thank you and take care.